Let's take a look at exporting a 2K project out of Premiere Pro using Adobe's Media Encoder. With the current beta and 4K outputs, we're highly recommending Adobe After Effects for 4K output, and we're going to show you that in just a minute. As always, when you're exporting back to full quality, you need to double check your source setting. I'm going to go to the project bin, go to source settings to bring up the red settings. Make sure that you set your 4K to half resolution so your 4K comes out at 2K, again for a 2K export, and make sure your 2K export is set to full. That way the 4K and the 2K will both come out at a full 2K. Make sure your maximum bit depth is turned on if your export codec supports 10 bit. And again, as always, you have to save Premiere Pro and quit. One of the things you'll notice when Premiere opens up and you're looking at my timeline is that my program monitor, my image is a lot larger than it used to be. So what we have to do at this point is we have to go to File, New, Sequence, and we're going to go to the red settings, 2K, and we're going to do a 2K with the same setting. So again, to 2 to 1, I'm going to call this 2K Full. And then I'm just going to do a very quick Select All copy and paste. And now you'll notice in my 2K image I've got full screen and my girl is back at full screen and now I'm ready to do my export. I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. When the Adobe Media Encoder comes up you'll notice under Export Settings you have lots of different formats to choose from. For example, you can go ahead and export this project out for a Blu-ray workflow. Just make sure you choose the appropriate Blu-ray export that matches your project. For me, I would probably use 1080p 23976 and export this out as either a high-quality MPEG-2 or you could go ahead and export it out as an H.264 Blu-ray and again, make sure you double check your presets and go down and choose the appropriate frame rate and size that you want to. You've got lots of other export options as well, depending on your workflow or where you need to take this file next. You could actually take it to a P2 workflow. Let's take it over to a QuickTime workflow and show you how batch processing has been implemented in Adobe Media Encoder. So under QuickTime, I'm going to go ahead and flip down my advanced mode settings. And I'll take a look at the video codec that I'm going to use. Let's take a look at exporting out to one of our hardware partners like AJA. You want to go ahead and double check that your size is correct for the way that you want to export. So in this case, I might export for a 2048 1024 because it's a 2 to 1 uh, workflow. Go ahead and double check your frame rate and any field options that you need to. Obviously double checking your aspect ratio is correct and render at maximum depth and then go ahead and click OK. Adobe Media Encoder runs independently of Premiere Pro. So it actually runs in the background. So as you'll see our project has already been queued up. I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Queue. This will start processing this particular file at 2048 1024 for export out to an AJA workflow. I'm going to jump back over to Premiere Pro and do a couple more exports. So again, while that's processing in the background, I'm going to go ahead and choose another workflow. Maybe I need to send this particular project off to an Avid workflow for someone on an Avid system to take from here. I'm going to go to Codex Settings again, and I'll go down and I'll choose one of the 23976 workflows that I want. And I'll go ahead and double check that my settings are right. Check any other settings that you need to check in order to get this into that particular workflow. Note that you can download the Avid DNX HD codec from the Avid website. I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and that will automatically start queuing once my first request for the AJA export has been completed. Let's go ahead and do a couple more. I'll go ahead and choose an Apple ProRes and send that out to the queue. And you see that it's added it again. And lastly, I'll go in and just do a real quick one for maybe my iPhone or some other portable media device 
So I'll choose H264, and I'll choose one of the presets, and you'll notice we have lots of presets for various websites. These are great for just sharing your projects with, uh, with other people that might need to review your project. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose uh, Apple iPod Video Large, which is the setting that we use for iPhone. It'll go ahead and set everything up accordingly and just set OK. And at this point, I've got everything queued up and ready to go. I can even minimize the Adobe Media Encoder and continue to work, or I can go ahead and quit Premiere Pro and I'm ready to go. For those of you that need 4K exports, we're currently recommending for the first beta that you use After Effects to do your 4K exports. Let's go ahead and start this new workflow for taking our projects over to After Effects at 4K. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to File, New, Sequence. Open up your red R3D folder and go to 4K and choose your appropriate preset. Again, mine is a 2 to 1 at 2397. I'm going to go ahead and name this 4K out. Now at this point, I've got a 4K timeline. I'm going to go back to my 512 timeline and do something very simple, which is a select all, copy, go back to the 4K timeline and paste. It's that easy. Now, one of the things you may notice when I look at this, I have the 512K sequence inside of this large 4K program window. That's because one of the final steps is to go back to the red settings and tell it to treat all of that footage at full res. Select any of your red footage in the bin. Go to source settings again. So under your 4K settings, go ahead and set your resolution to full and you're pretty much ready to go. Again, the maximum bit depth here really doesn't make any difference because we're taking this over to After Effects. And remember, After Effects is going to treat that at 32-bit float anyway. Now, just one point on the project that I'm working on. Don't forget that I do have a mix of 4K footage and 2K footage in this project. And taking a 2K footage to full is not going to give you a 2K at 4K. So keep in mind, when you're mixing footage, you don't want to necessarily scale that up, which is what you would have to do. You'd have to double the 2K footage in order to be 4K. Yes, you can do that, but you may not get the results that, you, that you're looking for. So remember, when you're working on your timelines, when and if you ever mix and match 2K and 4K footage, you would probably kick everything out at 2K. So just a little workflow note from my particular example. So we're just going to assume that everything on my timeline is 4K for this example. Next step would be to file save and quit Premiere Pro and jump into After Effects. And remember, it requires After Effects 901 or higher to use the red plugin. Once you're in After Effects, go to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, Import Premiere Pro Sequence. Go ahead and locate your Premiere Pro sequence. I'm going to go ahead and pick my 4K sequence. The next step is just to drag and drop it on the new composition icon. And what you should notice is you should notice that you have a 4K file now sitting on the After Effects timeline. You can go to your composition settings and double check that the information came in correct. Remember, you set this with the global settings inside of Premiere Pro. So it should come out at a 4K, 2K, again, a 2 to 1 at 23976. So I have all the information that I need to and I can go ahead and do my export. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up the render queue, take my composition and drag it down to the timeline, and go ahead and pick the appropriate output module that I want to out of After Effects. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a Cineon sequence, go to my Cineon settings, make sure I've got DPX chosen and any other information that I need to, and click OK. Go ahead and give it an output name and click Render. And that's pretty much all you need to do inside of After Effects. Let's go ahead and look at another way to work with Premiere Pro projects inside of After Effects. This is a method that I like to use because I like to view all of my clips independently on the timeline. And it's as easy as just going to File, Import, Premiere Pro Project, find your Premiere Pro Project, and click Open. What it's going to do is take a look at the Premiere Pro Project and read all of the sequence information in there. And as you'll notice, when I click on Sequences, I can go ahead and just select the 4K sequence that I want. The next thing you'll see is we go ahead and import all of the native R3D clips that are in there and go ahead and create a 4K composition. If I double click on the composition, I can see the exact same layout that I saw in 
inside of Premiere Pro. This is this is excellent. This is basically taking the same timeline and bringing it into After Effects. And the benefit of doing it this way is I get all the advantages of using Premiere Pro as an editor and then all of the advantages of After Effects for sending out to DPX. Maybe I want to take this over to an Assimilate Scratch workflow or do some other sort of color work inside of After Effects. Again, being After Effects, there's lots of different ways to do color correction. The next thing you'll do is to go ahead and bring up the render queue, drag your 4K sequence down, go ahead and set up your output module accordingly. Again, you might want to go into a Cineon workflow or any of these other standard After Effects exports. If you want to use Premiere Pro and After Effects together, one thing you want to double check is that you have color consistency. So let's go ahead and set up After Effects to work with color the same way Premiere Pro does. We want to go ahead and set up our project to make sure that we're reading all the information at 32 bits per channel. Just go ahead and click that. And go ahead and change the color settings to 32 bits per channel or 32 bit float. And to match Premiere Pro, make sure your working space is set to none. And you'll notice it now says 32-bit here. 